finally we have it here. We've been waiting quite a long time for this bill. And it's very irritating that it's so misleadingly named because, of course, the Rwanda Safety Bill is the opposite of what it is. And really, it should have been called the Rwanda Not Safe at All Bill. And what it amounts to is a stupid, messy, inhumane, cruel, immoral and, and, and idiotic way to actually think that you can solve the problem of, of migration like this. The government has created this problem by not putting in, for example, better safe legal routes. There have been lots of answers coming from these benches about other, other possibilities. And, um, uh, sorry, did somebody speak to me? Because that's not on. Um, so the government's created this problem, thrown together something they call a solution, which isn't a solution at all. It's Viscount Hailsham who keeps talking. Can the whips, can the whips have a word with him, please? Um, and then this government has dishonoured both houses by tabling it and bringing it to us to debate. It was wrong to bring this bill to us. It was wrong to develop it at all. So first the title, Rwanda's not a safe country. We've heard that again and again from the courts. The UK has just accepted for asylum Rwandans who were in fear of persecution if they stayed in Rwanda. That doesn't sound very safe. And just because this government says it's safe doesn't make it safe. I've heard some ridiculous things from that side of the chamber. I've also heard some very good things, by the way, but some quite ridiculous things about how uh, Rwanda is safe. It really isn't. Secondly, we'll be in violation of an international treaty. Do we want to be seen as a country that can't be trusted, that signs an agreement and then uh, backs out of it, doesn't stick to it? I would have thought not. This is an exceptional bill that needs us here in your Lordship's House to take exceptional action. Stopping a government with a track record of introducing draconian laws from overruling our courts is what we're here for. It's our job. Today we're talking about the rights of refugees, but if you accept this bill going through, then what's to stop a government with a big majority from disapplying other human rights? The path to a totalitarian state isn't just the government banning strikes and effective protests or restricting the right to vote, all of which have happened. It's ministers pushing through laws that say this group of people deserve no human rights and the courts are banned from helping them seek justice. Today it's refugees, but tomorrow there'll be another scapegoat to target. Some of them will be vile people doing horrible things, but that's the point of human rights. Human rights are for all of us. They are there to defend everyone's right to justice, whether they're saint or sinner, whether the government likes them or hates them. And Convention is on the side of rejecting this bill. The Labour front bench doesn't like the Lords blocking what <coughs> MPs have voted for, and I understand that we should use this power sparingly, but Labour, as we have heard, has done it. They had their own successful fatal motion 11 years ago, and so I, I think they could support today's fatal motion if they just held their noses. Going back a year before that, we rejected... Um, sorry. Uh, last year, I'm proud to say that all the opposition joined together to beat the government on the water pollution rules. And going back a year before that, we rejected outright the 18 pages of government amendments restricting the right to protest, and we forced the government to come back with new legislation. The Rwanda bill wasn't in the Conservative Party manifesto. Disapplying the Human Rights Act was not in the party manifesto. Convention allows us to reject it. And of course, there is the point which someone else did make that it's going to take us hours. We are going to be sitting here a very long time. And many of us, I think, probably don't have that many hours left. And we really should think, is that how we want to spend them? fighting this government and not winning and, and, and having all of our amendments sent back because that end of Parliament uh, doesn't understand what we're here for. And if the Prime Minister genuinely believes that this is the will of the people, then he should call a general election. Please give the public a chance to have their say about this and about the PPE corruption, about the mess they've deliberately made of the NHS. Now, I talk to a lot of people outside your Lordship's house, and some people are, of course, concerned about the boats arriving for all sorts of reasons. But on doorsteps, in streets and offices, shops and pubs, the talk is less of stop the boats and much more of stop the Tories.